Hi there! Welcome back to the weird side of YouTube. I am author DC Knight, and this is Storyteller. The video series where I tell you creepy or just otherwise interesting stories from my life. Today, I thought that I would talk about, um, since I've been talking about my personal experiences with supernatural things as a child, maybe I would could get into, uh, the other, uh, strange happenings in my hometown where I grew up, because my hometown is apparently pretty haunted. <laughs> There was an urban legend about a woman. These these are very popular urban legends around any kind of hometown, so you've probably heard one before. It's not like Bloody Mary or the Boogeyman or anything, but it's... I'll just give you some examples. There's one of the church that I keep mentioning, the, my childhood church, of a woman throwing herself off the steeple and uh, dying because she had gotten pregnant by a pastor there, and he didn't want anything to do with her after that, so she threw herself off of the steeple. Um, I've heard versions of this from friends from all over the country, so that's why I think that it's just, like, you know, more folklore than, like, someone actually saw this. Um, there's also one called Crybaby Bridge, and I know for a fact there's a Crybaby Bridge in, like, multiple states, uh, and the story is the same. It's where if you go onto a certain bridge in the middle of the night, usually in the middle of the woods, uh, you'll hear a baby crying, and that is supposedly because a woman threw her baby off the bridge because she couldn't take care of it, and then she threw herself off the bridge. One or the other. Something about a baby dying. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a few of those, like, very common urban legends that circulate around my hometown. I don't live there anymore, so I don't know. I haven't lived there in quite a while, thank God. But... There's a few of those very common ones that circulate, uh, but I don't I don't know if those are really anything you guys would want to hear about because they're very um, common. Uh, you've probably heard one from your hometown that's the same. Uh, very common urban legend kind of stuff. So um, the first story that I would like to tell you is the story of. I'm not sure if he has a name, actually. I don't think the poor fellow has a name. No, he doesn't have a name, apparently. But he's a white dog. Sounds innocent enough, right? Um, for the last stories, uh, I don't know which video it was, but I told you that I used to walk around at night when I was depressed and, like, out of my head. Um, the street that my hometown church was on, um, that I saw that shadow man at, is the same street where people have supposedly seen this dog. I have never seen it, but I've heard stories of not really my friends, because my friends never saw it, my parents never saw it, my sister never saw it, but I've heard like rum rumors around town of people seeing it. People that lived on that street, people at the church saw it sometimes. Um, I never did. So this is not my story. This is a story from an urban legend, I guess you would say, because it's on the internet, you can find it. Um, my hometown is Gaffney, South Carolina. The street is called Carson Drive. Um, it, the actual creature that they see, it looks just like a white dog, like a normal white dog, but it walks on its hind legs. And uh, from the stories that I've heard, it will walk up to you and ask you if it can borrow a cigarette. <laughs> This, the, the encounters I've read online do not mention this, so um, maybe, people, maybe people think that that makes it less scary, so when they publish it on their blogs, they take that part out, um, but for the urban legend in my hometown that gets passed around, this dog asks you for a cigarette. What happens after you give him a cigarette? I don't know. Maybe if you don't give him one, uh, he lets you go. Maybe if you do give him one, he kills you. I don't know. I, I don't know what happens. All I know is that there's a white dog that supposedly walks on his hind legs and asks people for a cigarette. Maybe he didn't ask me because he knew that I don't smoke. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of these stories are uh, about the Gaffney Strangler, if you don't know who that is. Alright, I'm reading this, I think it's from Wikipedia. 
Leroy Martin, also known as the Gaffney Strangler, was an American serial killer from Gaffney, South Carolina. He murdered four people, two women, and two girls between 1967 and 1968. And um, a lot of the places where he frequented, a lot of the places where he uh, took his victims' lives, are said to be haunted now. It's getting chilly in here. Alright. Okay. There's a place called Chain Gang Road in my hometown. Yes, that is a problematic ass name. My town is a problematic ass town. Um, there's there's a rumor that says that if you go on this road at night, you'll hear the screams of the Gaffney Strangler's victims. I never happened to go on that road at night. A lot of people get the impression that like my uh, neighborhood was pretty uh, dark. It was not. It was very suburban, very old, rich, white folk. Um, I was very privileged. There is an abandoned water wheel in the forest that uh, the Gaffney Strangler took some of his victims to. I've been there. Um, it just... I'd like to say that I got chills. I was, they were multiplying. <laughs> no, I'd like to say that I got chills and I felt something there, but it just felt like a normal place to me. Um, it's uh, pretty unnerving to think that he brought people down there to murder them, but I didn't feel anything other than the normal... <clears throat> it's a forest, there's birds chirping, there's woodland creatures around. Um, the water wheel itself is pretty creepy. It's jet black because of... I don't know why it's jet black, but it's jet black and like the underside where the water used to go is empty and there's no sign of anything else around it. So it's just a random water wheel in the middle of the woods, which is pretty unnerving in itself. Um, that place is supposedly haunted. Maybe it's different at night. I didn't go at night. I went with my friend Shauna uh, during the day, and it was quite pretty. We took pictures, but that was a long time ago, and those pictures were lost. Um, why I wanted to talk about the Gaffney Strangler today is because another personal story of mine. When I got kicked out of my house for being gay or whatever, I moved in with my best friend. And uh, she and I shared an interest in the macabre. So when she got a very suburban Walmart plastic glow-in-the-dark uh, Ouija board, she and I and her sister and I think a couple of our younger friends that were neighborhood kids, we decided to try to talk to the spirit of the Gaffney Strangler and try to summon him. I know that is a, a terrible sounding idea, even if you're atheist, it's just completely disrespectful to his victims and everything, but we were kids, we were like literally 15, 16 years old, and uh, we just thought it'd be something cool to fuck around with. So we first we were playing with a Ouija board in like a trailer that they were setting up for her aunt to move in in the neighborhood. and. Uh, it was em empty, and so there was no electricity, so we thought that would be a cool place. Uh, so we did, and it was creepy, and it was fun. We were like in a closet, all five of us just playing with a Ouija board. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure me and my best friend were moving the planchette around to scare the younger kids. Uh, I don't really remember much of it, because it was so long ago. It's like 15 years ago. Man, God, where's the time going? But then we went to the woods one Halloween, and we're actually trying to summon the spirit of... The Gaffney Strangler. Oh my goodness, you guys. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened at all. Um, there had been some uh, incidences around after that that uh, made me and uh, my best friend think that maybe we had conjured something from the past because uh, a few months after that there were a couple murders going around. Uh, so we felt kind of guilty, but I don't think that it was us doing it. I think that it was just coincidence. I don't believe in anything like that, but, um... Uh, the Gaffney Strangler is a terrifying story, and, um... There are some really creepy places in my hometown that are connected to him. Not just the ones I've mentioned here. But, uh, my town is pretty, uh, haunted, apparently. Um... It's just funny that all of my experiences have nothing to do with the Gaffney Strangler. <laughs> so, um, that makes me think that, uh, maybe I was dreaming, 
or maybe uh, the ghosts that other people see are just dreams or like hallucinations or something. Because a lot of these stories, especially the ones, the ones about the white dog, are uh, told to me from very um, conspicuous sources. I will say um, uh, they they come from people that. Um, I wouldn't normally associate myself with, and I know that makes me sound like an elitist prick, but I am scared of drugs, and I don't like being around them. Uh, the energy that comes with that is just very consume, consume, uh, don't care about anyone else, and I don't like that. Um, it scares me, so I don't like to be around people that do drugs, uh, or sells it. Um, I know that <laughs> it's not like I think I'm better than them, it's that I'm scared to be around it, because I don't, it makes me uncomfortable. Um, if you have a career in that field, <laughs> I know that's a strange way to put it, but I don't think that I'm better than you. I, um, I just don't feel comfortable around it, and hopefully uh, some people will <laughs> respect that. I know other people won't, which is fine. That is about it for the Haunted Places of My Hometown video. I really hope you guys like this video. Um, if you did, please like and comment. Tell me what you thought about it. Uh, please subscribe. Please. <laughs> but honestly, I appreciate just of you. Uh, there will be more of these videos probably every Sunday, at least one every Sunday. I'm trying to start to get myself on a YouTube schedule. So Storyteller is going to be on Sunday. And then Sims, we're going to have a Sims Saturday. So like a playthrough of The Sims on Saturday. And uh, I'm going to be doing challenges and stuff on The Sims, so if you're interested in that, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the schedule, but <laughs> at least I'm getting some series scheduled out. Uh, for my writing stuff, I have no idea. For Art Aquarium, I have no idea. I kind of just make art when I want to, whenever the mood strikes me. So uh, trying to force myself to do it usually ends up in very shoddy work. So uh, I'm probably never going to schedule Art Aquarium. We'll just have to keep a lookout for it. Um, but I really hope you guys like this video. Did you, do you want to pet the white dog? Do you want to uh, give him a cigarette? Let me know. Bye-bye!